do we have sense at all in Africa? Fellow Nigerians, this is a call to reimagining, for us to reimagine and reevaluate our ways. This is a call for us to confront and question our convictions about how we approach things like the accustomed ways of running corporate administrative bodies, like our accepted protocols and bureaucracy around politics and governmental and MDAs, like the way we operate businesses in this area, even uh, the mechanisms for climate control, religious practices, and overall societal ideals. This is not to throw shades at anyone, so please don't get me wrong because it's a collective responsibility for ev on every one of us as a way to advance the society we live in. Now, the irony is that the systems and structures that run most institutions in the world that we live in today were designed and passed on to us by certain long dead individuals based on the realities they found themselves decades and centuries back. But my, my, my shock is how come the world we live in is changing so rapidly, yet we've insisted on applying the rules of a world that once was. Hmm. If a one-off second chance at reasoning were given to the dead once again, I believe that whilst on one hand, most of the people who died might feel proud to realize that even some of their serendipity-driven actions and spontaneous inventions and ideals are still upheld this high, decades, generations, and centuries after. I also believe that on the other hand, they would also be shocked that humanity hasn't advanced in thinking and reasoning beyond what they will undoubtedly consider as in today's world as their antiquated crafting of those times, in spite the technological and information revolution and advancements that we are privy to which obviously eluded them. Do I start from Cornelius Vanderbilt, who was involved in transportation and built interconnection of cities using the railway systems? The question is, how far have we advanced the rail system in Nigeria and Africa? What about John D. Rockefeller, who built an oil empire and found a way to build pipelines to transport his oil from city to city, rather than depend on Vanderbilt's rail railroad business? A competitive um, move anyway. But how is it that we are still stuck with pipelines as a means of transporting oil from southern Nigeria to the north? Time will fail me to make reference to An Andrew Carnegie or, no, or to talk about JP Morgan who developed a model for running financial institutions which our banks today have not even advanced much beyond. My call is for us to engage our minds as a people in honest conversations around what we consider as our way or the way that we choose to do things in our religious styles, in our businesses, corporate practices and the likes. Because our children are looking up to us for a better, more enabling, more sustainable systems that preserve the right values of humanity and they preserve the society we live in. So my humble challenge to us is to ask ourselves certain questions. Number one, who created the ideology driving your organizational policies? Who exactly wrote the original script of the HR policy that your company is currently running on, which is killing creativity? Can we rather model, why are we not modeling institutions like uh, the SEMCO's uh, democratic workplace culture in Brazil, where employees set their own goals, decide when to come to work, and choose what resumption time will be per person per time? What about Zappos culture in the US or the Southwest Airlines, where fun is a central or core part of employees' work? In this kind of environment, you play too much, they say you're not serious. Now, finally, let me ask a question. Who exactly instituted the policy that two people working in an office cannot marry and still remain employees? I hear that uh, there are things like, okay, they say it's to avoid distractions at work on one hand and also to avoid the two people colluding to def defraud the organization, especially where it's, a, where it's a financial institution that we're talking about. But let's dispassionately dissect this a little more. The Holy Scriptures make it, have made it clear that your heart will always be where your treasure is. So if there is a crisis in town today, a woman's heart will be 
where her husband is and vice versa. So why keep her in a place where that leaves her mind or her heart somewhere else? Additionally, are employees not sleeping around with themselves? And how come they can manage the distractions and get work done? Besides, if defrauding is by people who are emotionally involved working together, then most companies that we have in Nigeria really, and especially in the banking sector and telecoms, would have been wrecked. So can you see how we are deluding ourselves? Hence my question, do we have sense at all in Africa? Okay, that was, that was such an interesting introduction. And the question, do we have sense in Africa? I think personally, I'd like to trace this back to colonialism. You know, when the colonial masters came to Africa and Nigeria, okay, in particular, they saw that Africa had the potential to become the global superpower based on the abundance of human and material resources. And they didn't want that. So what they did is that they created an education system that stifled creativity, True. ideation, and ingenuity. True. And by implication, rendering us eternally dependent on Western invention, right? So I think the first thing African leaders should do should be a total overhaul of the system we inherited from the colonial masters. That's what Paul Kagame is doing in Rwanda, mm. destroying colonialistic and neo-colonialistic structure. And that is why Rwanda is today the invention hub of Africa. But, but if I may come in there, because part of the issues that were raised were not even issues of technology. It were issues of culture, a way of life. And uh, a lot of time for us in this part, we, we know that we have, uh, we tend to promote the, that culture that will stifle uh, advocacy or uh, we respect is so very important to us. So we want you to, we, we, we don't want to be talked back to. We have a culture that does not encourage asking questions. Mm. When, you, when, when you ask a question, someone who's older than you feels you're being rude. Mm -hmm. It becomes offensive. Now, when a child has grown in that culture, what kind of an adult would he become? Of course, he, he, his ability to question has already been restricted from when he was little. Culturally, uh, for, from my own head, because of uh, my origin, being an African man, <laughs> I can say categorically that we have sense in Africa. Uh, top doctors in the world, and inventors, and uh, people doing great things around the world uh, from Africa, from Nigeria. So I know we have sense. But the, 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 the problem is the inefficiencies that you identified across all sectors, public and private sector. A lot of people are benefiting from these deficiencies and inefficiencies. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, my, my primary constituency, the courtroom. Mm. Why do we do paper filing only? The Lagos State High Court got burnt, mm. and we lost records of between 150 and 200 years. Mm. Why? I interacted with some people from Ministry of Justice, Lagos State. They have a system in place that triggers and notifies the ministry when somebody is arrested and arraigned in court so that they can follow up and speed up the process of getting the DPP advice and all of that. That system is not working. So you have thinkers who have put in place a system that is meant to ease criminal uh, 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 justice system in Lagos State. But that system is not working. Why? Mr. Samson, please, what's your, what's your view? It's, it's, it's an interesting system. <laughs> Well, uh, it's a sad reality that we have found ourselves here, but definitely it's not the end of the rope for us. There is still, we are crops of new leaders, and I believe that at our own organizations, we can begin to put in small, small changes. Since we have identified it now, and we know that it has not taken those ahead of us anywhere, we can begin to do little, little within our private organizations or where we work, put into try, try to instill new cultures that break all these jinx and yokes of uh, uh, colonial uh, restrictions that will now put us into creativity and ingenuity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Samson. Um, we've heard it all, and I hope we'll take this up, especially those of us that have the capacity to make the decision. Up next is a lecture on the need for electoral reforms 
in Nigeria. And Francis is on standby after this break.